Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 4 of the Where Am I podcast. The podcast where we explore the world virtually because we cannot do so physically. Uh, so in yesterday's episode I actually gave you uh, clues to two sites. Uh, now today I'm actually only going to focus on one of those sites, mainly because I just want to try and keep this video um, as sort of around 10 minutes or between 10 and 20 minutes, ideally as close to 10 minutes as possible. So it's just not a lot of me waffling on here. After all, Coffee Break Archaeology is supposed to be sort of short snippets that you can enjoy when you're having a cup of coffee, either uh, sort of in the morning, at lunchtime, in the evening, or whenever you like, really, whenever you like to sit down and relax. So the first site we're going to uh, deal with um, today and then the second site I'll deal with when I do my next video which may not actually be tomorrow just because it's a bank holiday weekend got a lot going on so it might not come out until Sunday or might not do it until Sunday um, but it should come out Sunday Monday time so I do apologize for that I completely forgot about that when I was talking about it yesterday in the podcast this week really has sort of crept up on me quite quickly so what I'm going to do I'm going to repeat the clues I gave yesterday. So site one that I was at is an ancient uh, city carved into a rock face. Its original name is Rakmu and it has a strong link with Indiana Jones. Uh, now I thought those three clues were probably sufficient um, for most people to get that um, either by knowing the link or by, just by googling the name Rakmu, R-A-Q-M-U. So if you didn't see yesterday's episode and you've just heard those clues for the first time, I'll just give you a few moments. I'll do a little bit of a musical countdown before I reveal where I am. So here we go. Do 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 so there we go, I think that's probably long enough. So yes, if you haven't guessed it, um, or if you have that guessed it, well done. I was, of course, at Petra. Now, Petra is one of those sites which inspired me uh, from a very young age, I think, to pursue archaeology. I, it was Petra, Stonehenge, Machu Picchu. Those were kind of uh, sites that I was aware of. And I remember seeing Petra in a magazine. It may have been a... National Geographic or something like that and I was just completely taken away by how perfect it looked, how such an ancient site can look so sort of perfectly formed, carved into the rock face and it, and I, it just made me want to learn more about the people who made that settlement and of course I do remember uh, seeing it uh, in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So I'm just going to do a very brief sort of history and background of Petra. Um, it should probably uh, deserve a lot more, but again, trying to keep these videos as short as possible. Of course, like always, if you want to find out more, I'll put some useful links down in the description so you can go and find out more about Petra yourself. So Petra, or as it was originally known, Rakmu, or one of its uh, original names, is probably one of the most well-known uh, historical and archaeological sites in, in Jordan. Petra lies around by uh, the Jabal al Madaba, which I've probably butchered the pronunciation of, uh, mountain, um, which I believe translates as something like the mountain of the altar, and is believed by uh, and and the mountain is believed by some biblical scholars to be the biblical Mount Sinai. Um, but of course, we're, we're not here to discuss that. So Jordan lays in a in a basin surrounded by mountains, which form the eastern flank of the Arabah Valley, um, that runs from the Dead Sea to the Gulf of Aqaba. The area around uh, Petra has sort of been uh, occupied, we think, since around about uh, 7,000 BC. Um, 
with a pre-pottery Neolithic site of uh, Bedar, not um, which was not too. Um, which was built around that time, not too far from Petra. Um, during the Bronze Age, it is actually listed in Egyptian campaign accounts and the uh, Amarna letters, and it's listed as Pel, Sila, or Ser. Um, and it's sort of evidence of, you know, occupation again during the Iron Age. And again, it was eventually founded in the, in, in the Iron Age, um, no earlier than somewhere well somewhere between the fifth the seventh uh, to fifth century bc um so then we so sort of starting around uh, sort of between the, that sort of 700 to 500 bc area um it eventually becomes the capital city of the Nabataeans, which were one of the several nomadic uh, Bedouin tribes that roamed the Arabian desert and they slowly moved their herbs where they could, trying to get closer to water. Um, and eventually, you know, they settle at Petra or Rechem. Um, and again, you know, there are references or were potentially references to Petra um, among sort of classical historians. Josephus um, mentions uh, Petra briefly, and it is also um, mentioned or potentially mentioned in Diodorus Siculus. But the issue with that is when they were talking the Greek, Petra in Greek means stone or rock and is often used to refer to as um, a, a sort of natural formation or shelter or refuge. And it is recorded in Diodosiklus um, that in the expeditions which uh, Antigonus uh, went against the Nabataeans in 312 BC that uh, they took refuge in a natural fortress. Oh, sorry, in a fortress. Uh, in a, um, and they obviously mention the name Petra. Uh, and it's sort of in, obviously in the right area, but it also goes on to say in those accounts that, the, well, it certainly implied that description that there was no town uh, there at the time. So it's probably likely to be a natural rock formation in and around the Petra area, but not actually in Petra. So sort of moving into the sort of uh, Roman period, it was incorporated um, as part of Arabia, um, or Syria really actually, uh, in 106 AD when Cornelius Palmer was the governor of Syria. And um, sort of Petra became the capital of that of that region, um, but it did slowly fall into decline during the uh, Roman period. Um, and in 363 AD, there was actually an earthquake that destroyed many buildings and actually crippled the sort of vital water supply, which led to Petra, uh, which led to uh, the site most likely being. Eventually, um, or bits of it were abandoned, certainly. Um, in some of the sort of the Byzant Byzantine uh, churches, um, there were discovered 140 papyri, uh, which contained many contracts dated between 537 and 593. Uh, AD in that area, which suggested that the city was still flourishing, but was sort of probably still uh, declining from what it once was. And then we sort of move into sort of the medieval period uh, in the 12th century during the Crusades. Um, we know that the area was inhabited uh, or being used for fortresses during that period, um, but the, for the fortresses were uh, had to be abandoned 
Uh, and it was really because of that Petra fell out of um, wider knowledge until the 19th century. Um, obviously, locals were still uh, potentially aware of the site and it fell into various folklore and legends. Now, the sort of first uh, European um, to describe the sort of ruins of Petra was a Swiss traveller, uh, Johann Ludwig Burkhardt, uh, during his travels in 1812. Um, and it was also in 1813 painted by the Scottish painter David Roberts. But it wasn't uh, sort of excavated really. Uh, until uh, 1929, the area had actually become uh, because the area had actually become sort of susceptible to tombs of Petra being robbed and bits of the ruins being robbed because of the increased knowledge of Petra and where they were. So, in 1929, a four-person team consisting of uh, British archaeologists. Uh, Agnes Conway and George Horsfield, a uh, Palestinian physician and folklore expert, Dr. Torfik Kanan, I've probably again butchered that name, and Dietlef Nielsen, who was a Danish scholar, uh, excavated and surveyed Petra. So that very sadly uh, brings us to the end of our sort of short history of Petra. There's so much more that we could really talk about. We didn't really talk uh, about what is known as the sort of uh, city, the bits in the city centre, such as um, our uh, Kazna or the Treasury. Um, we haven't really talked about the theatres either. And we've really not touched on the tombs. Again, there was just so much more you could talk about with Petra. This was really just designed to be a very brief overview of the entire city site as as a whole. Again, I may come back in later um, episodes and look at specific parts of Petra. That is maybe something I might do. Not going to make any promises, though, at this time. Um, so we are really going to stop talking about Petra here because, again, uh, we have gone past our uh, 10 minutes uh, video already and we need to move on. So for today, I'm not actually going to give a new clue as I've still got one out there from yesterday's video of site number two where I was. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give you those clues again. And then we will reveal all in the next video. So again, this site I thought was quite an easy one. So I only gave a very few clues. Okay, three clues really. I was at a, a Anglo-Saxon ship burial site in Woodbridge in Suffolk and I'm associated or it is associated with a very famous bit of headwear. So there you go, those are all the clues you are getting. Anglo-Saxon ship burial site, Woodbridge in Suffolk and it is associated with a very famous bit of headwear. Now if you weren't able to get it from that, I'm not entirely sure what other clues I could give you. Uh, Alternative, if you do not know where I am, you can always Google Bing or whatever uh, search engine you prefer, and I'm sure that will come up very quickly on that search. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. As I said earlier, I really don't know when the next video is uh, going to be. It will be sometime over the weekend. It may not be tomorrow just because a lot of stuff going on with the bank holiday weekend here in the, in the UK or in England. So um, it should be, there should be an episode up though by Sunday or on Sunday, it might be late on Sunday, but we should, uh, there should be an episode then. So thank you very much for tuning in and until next time, take care.